Good morning. Boy, everybody's headed toward downtown Kailua. All right. Again, good morning on this Palm Sunday here at St. Christopher's in Kailua. We'll start at the top of page two with the Liturgy of the Psalms. And please note, and we'll be mentioning this several times, the flow of the service today is going to be different than it usually is. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. And we will enter the church together, reading Psalm 118, which Marianne will lead. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us, form a procession with branches upon the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, his mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you, let us pray. Almighty together, almighty and ever living God, 
in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey, donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord God. Please be seated. spent most of last night trying to come up with an analogy for today's gospel about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. I thought of a president's inauguration. However, there's a defining limit to that, four years. Then I thought of the Rose Bowl parade. Yet, there's nothing of importance about that. Then, I thought of the arrival of a new head football coach in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Norman, Oklahoma, Ann Arbor, Michigan, the heart of Los Angeles, which is how Southern University of Southern California is located online. In fact, just about anywhere that a Power Five conference school that's had any success in football in the past 100 years, any success, thank you Vanderbilt, is located. The dynamics work. Desperate desire for the one who will return us to glory. The finding and anointing of that individual. The inevitable comparison to the prior leader to glory. The welcoming arrival, replete with wild and unbridled enthusiasm. Band, trustees, alums, screaming and yelling and singing hosannas, and the vision of unending success. In the background, however, lurk those who feel they maintain programs, faculty, and sports writers. Yet among this entire group, who knows the true cost of the relationship? What will be the cost of the inevitable salary and facilities arms race? How soon will the feet of the anointed one, the new head football coach, turn to clay? Nothing matters except the certainty of the vision. Which brings us to this morning's events. It is so hard, almost impossible, to separate what happens right now, what we've just been a part of, and the symbols of which we carry, and wave, and wear over our hearts, from what we know all too well happens next. We all know what begins right now and where it will end in a week, and that it never really ever ends. However, for this moment, let's focus on the here and now, on Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We've just become a part of that entry. 
We're disciples following after him. We're the crowd strolling his path with palm, flowers, and our clothes as we see him riding through it. Hosanna, we shout, to the king of Israel. We're there holding in our hearts exactly who we want Jesus to be. Military king, spiritual king, cultural and political king. But for right now, let's just be who we are. The crowd welcoming Jesus with excitement, exhilaration, and swelling hearts. Here is our king who will lead us to whatever type of freedom we want. How exciting is this? Let's try to separate what we know from what at this moment we don't comprehend. The true cost of discipleship. The disciples don't fully understand who Jesus is or what he truly proclaims. The crowd doesn't know because they see who they want to see. All they know is that Jesus, who has just recently raised Lazarus from the dead, is now here among them. The other group in Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, who are not present, yet hang over everything like a wet blanket, are the military and political and cultural systems whose world of control and dominance are threatened by Jesus and his world of love and compassion. Aren't we like all these groups? We are the disciples who have lived with and walked with Jesus, watching miraculous things occur around and through him, yet not fully comprehending what they mean. We are the crowd wanting Jesus to fulfill our wishes, to create the world we want, the freedoms we crave. We are those military and political and cultural systems holding on to what we feel is critical and important to us. This morning, right now, we are full of uncertainty, exhilaration, and not a little fear. It is into this miasma of humanness that Jesus rides. God with us, Emmanuel, is entirely away from his birth with angels singing and shepherds watching and cattle lowing. Now, angels have been replaced by the crowd. Shepherds have been replaced by Romans and Herodians and chief priests who are watching closely for confirmation of the threat they all fear. Yet, we must live in this moment. We must embrace the power of all the emotion the crowd feels. If we don't, how can we truly embrace who Jesus is and what he represents? If this week is to have profound and life-altering meaning for us as Episcopalians, Christians, and human beings, we need to surrender right now to the power and emotion of Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. After all, our head ball coach is here. Let us join together as we again say, as loudly as we dare, Hosanna to the King of Israel. Let's, Let's try, try that together. To the King of Israel. Hosanna to the King of Israel. Prayers to the people. Do we rise? Please rise. Our Lord comes to us humbly, riding a donkey and proclaiming a message of peace. Let us pray, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians hear and share the word of God as true disciples, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that all ends of the earth receive the words of the King of Peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of church and state prefer humble service to empty power, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives draw strength 
from the name above every other name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who hope to greet Jesus when he comes again be ready and joyful, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks and pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially according to our parish cycle of prayer, Ron Wong, Larry and Mary Alice Woody, Bruce and Virginia Young, and their Ohana. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dan, Betty Jo, Sharon, Sarah, Jean, Lisa, Linda, Hank Hankins, Kathy, Debbie, Gay, Diane, Mary Lynn, and those we name now either silently or aloud. We pray for the nation and all in authority. Protect all men and women who serve our nation in faraway places and those in harm's way. We pray for those affected by the mass shootings in Atlanta and Boulder. We pray for all those who have died, especially Sylvia and Sue Jean, that they may find eternal life in your loving presence. God, our creator, you show your sons and daughters the way to freedom through the gentle obedience of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant our petitions as we seek to follow him. We pray in his name, Christ the Lord. Amen. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please kneel or sit, whatever you're, however you're most comfortable, as we confess our sins together against God and our neighbor. Um, at this point in time, we'll celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. And especially Emily Hawkins and Claudia Kennedy, whose birthdays are on Wednesday, the 31st of March, and John Hawkins, whose birthday is on Easter this year, April 4th. Would anybody else, does anybody else have a, like to have a birthday, an anniversary, Thanksgivings that they'd like to celebrate? Yes, your brother. Yes, my brother. <laughs>
yesterday. yesterday. Oh, by the way, in case anybody wants to know what yesterday is in Hawaiian, it is I ku'u wahili. I'm taking Hawaiian lessons and I specifically asked about that. Let us join in saying together our prayer of thanksgiving. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in Hawaiian, Haole Lahanao, Aho O Mai Ka. And you have announcements on your goldenrod insert to the bulletin. Before I talk about those, I would like to dedicate and bless our new Stations of the Cross. On Friday, people will be able to walk the Stations of the Cross, uh, but please Call ahead and let us know when you're coming so that we'll have someone here available uh, as you walk the stations. I will make your windows of agates and all your borders of pleasant stones. Look upon the rainbow and praise God who made it. How beautiful in its brightness. Let us pray. Oh God, the whole world is filled with the radiance of your glory. Accept our offering of these stations, which recreate stained glass stations, and which we now dedicate to you for the adornment of this place and the inspiration of your people. Grant that as the light shines in its many colors, so our lives may show forth the beauty of your manifold gifts of grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And today's the last day for dedicating, uh, for, uh, um, either putting flowers in memory of someone or in honor of somebody or for the glory of Easter. This is the last day. We'll be creating that page with names this next week. And the first contactless family promise meal was a great success this last Monday. And so they are going to do it again on, on let's see, May 17th. And they're going to cook for double the people that they cooked for this last time, uh, for 40 people. So they'll need a few more volunteers, and some others have stepped up, but we need volunteers for two main dishes, each for 20, dessert for 40 as well, two people to provide sides, and someone to drive the food to the emergency shelter. So you've got plenty of time to think about that. The anniversary shirts and hats. Tom needs to be able to order 25 more shirts. If he gets 25 orders, he will make the order to the company that created our shirts. And get a cap also, if you haven't. Confirmation, if you are not confirmed in the Episcopal Church, we are having confirmation classes for when the bishop visits on April 25th, where, once again, we will continue to celebrate our 75th anniversary. 
I commend Easter Vigil to you. I commend all the services to you, but especially Saturday, April 3rd, 7 p.m., Easter Vigil. We'll have a service of the flame outside, and you bring a bell to ring when the lights go on and we celebrate the risen Christ. Also, we have these uh, postcards. You'll probably get one in the mail, but also take one from back in the back by the organ and hand one to one of your friends and invite them to come. Something that didn't make it into the announcements this week is our staycation weekend. From April 30th to May 2nd, we actually have, I think, about eight families. And so we, I think, need two more families. I'm very confident we'll get that. If you're at all interested in that, please take one of the brochures in the back. And I believe you know that the offering plates are up at the front and then one as you enter under the portico chair in the back by the organ. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Once again, that this service has a different order to it. So when you get to the end of the communion, just know we have a little bit more to come. So don't be standing up and ready to walk out the door. creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us 
in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. And then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with King Kamehameha IV, Queen Emma, St. Christopher, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. We take them in remembrance that Christ died for us, and we feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels, who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Bar Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, Hail King, King of the, the Jews. Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of his purple cloak and put his clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, uh -huh. you, you who would destroy, destroy the, the temple, temple and build, and build it in three days, days. Save, save yourself. yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is, he is calling, calling for, for Elijah. Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let, let us see, see whether, whether Elijah will, will come down. to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in his way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, Truly, this, this man, man was God's son. Our observance of Holy Week has begun. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.